that will come. <laughs> Hello there, triads and dyads. Today I'll be making a breakfast dish that is sure to impress any overnight guest. This dish was, in fact, the result of a panicked improvisation once spent in sticky summer morning. And I'm happy to announce that joining me here today are the very two inspiring individuals whose culinary prowess and internet presence is the very reason that I was able to come up with this hybridized morning delight in the first place. Mr. Gordon Ramsay. You're a first class cunt and binging with Babish's very own Andrew Rea. <laughs> what? Yeah. Thanks for being here today, guys. I, I'll be honest, I was a little nervous about this recipe, but, but I know that with, with both of you here by my side, taking me by the hand and guiding my tender yet supple frame, I just know I can do it. You surprise me to how shit you are. Thanks, I guess. Sh shut the fuck up. My apologies. This dish is a savory pancake topped with layers of creamy scrambled egg, a spiced potato onion mixture, and a sweet and sour coconut tomato sauce. The multitude of sympathetic flavors is sure to wake even the sleepiest of Western palates. I'm gonna start with the pancake recipe because the batter needs to rest in the fridge for a little while, so while it's resting, we can use that to do the other stuff. And I got this recipe from Binging with Babish, and I can say with unshakable confidence. I'm gonna nail it. I think I'll be the judge of that. In a mixing bowl, add 200 grams of all-purpose flour, two tablespoons sugar, two teaspoons baking powder, half a teaspoon baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Then whisk to combine. For your wet ingredients, you wanna add about three tablespoons of melted butter into two cups of milk, thereby turning it into buttermilk. Just kidding. And then pour your wet ingredients into the dry. Huh, now I, I can't exactly remember at this step. Do we mix it a lot or do we mix it a little? What do you think, guys? And if you put less milk in, it really helps it not going lumpy. Thanks for reminding me. So we don't want lumps. Lumpy batter leads to tender, fluffier pancakes. Wait, okay, hold on. So, so we do want lumps? And the secret for me is to have a nice thin mix. Wait, how, how can we have a thin, lumpy mix that, that, that doesn't make sense? The overmixtured batter. What, really? Make sure you give your pancake mix a really nice stir. Overmixing is bad. The secret is to get that really nice, smooth paste. Overmixing is bad, overmixing is bad, overmixing is bad. In case that wasn't clear, you want lumpy batter. Then cover with plastic wrap and let rest in the fridge for 30 minutes. While our batter is resting, we can get started on the mirepoix that's going to provide the foundation for our savory pancake. Now often the term mirepoix is used to refer to the specific coupling of carrots, onions, and celery, but I like to think of it more broadly as referring to any combination of aromatic vegetables. So with that in mind, dice up a few thumbs of ginger and crush up a handful of garlic as seen here. Then cut the cheeks off an assortment of peppers. Now these peppers all have a degree of heat, some more than others. A good way to get the flavor of the peppers without taking on so much additional pain is really just to cut away the cheeks of these peppers, taking care to not only avoid the seeds, but more importantly, the ribs, as this is where most of the capsaicin is. You might want to wear food safe gloves when doing this, I didn't, and suffice it to say that I had to take a more hands-free approach when relieving myself. Once everything's chopped up, mix it together and set it aside. Then pour some oil into a pan. I'm using mustard oil for no other reason than I think it works really well with all the flavors we're doing here, but uh, you know, you can use whatever you got. First we have to fry up some whole spices to amp up our mirepoix even more. So add in a pinch of nigella seeds, ajuan seeds, mustard seeds, and cumin seeds. Cook until fragrant or until the oil heats up to the point where they start to bubble and froth a little bit. You definitely don't want to overcook them because they're going to be very, very bitter. Then dump in all your mirepoix. Over the cooking process, it's going to lose about two-thirds of its volume in water, and we're going to use that moisture expulsion to deglaze the pan as needed. So the first of our pancake fillings is very simple. 
Just shallow fry some roughly chopped onions on a medium high heat until you get some charred grilled flavor. We're not looking to gently bring out their natural sweetness. We want to aggressively bring out that grilled onion flavor. So once the onions have some color but are not fully cooked through, add in some chopped leftover potatoes and then add in about a tablespoon of turmeric powder. Break up your taters with a color absorbing bamboo spatula so that they realize their full potential as flavor sponges. Once again, you're gonna get a respectable layer of fond on your pan's surface and it's gonna take some stubbornness to get it from the pan onto your food. The dry powdered turmeric in particular is responsible for this. But just keep at it and you'll get there eventually. Once you're happy with it, transfer it onto a plate to cool. Mix in about two thirds of your mirepoix into your pancake batter and the rest into your potato onion mixture. Now, this sauce was completely off the cuff. I happened to notice that despite my best efforts, there was still some fond left over in the bottom of the pan. And, and so my brain just was like, And then I poured about three quarters of a can of coconut milk into the hot pan to combine forces and become the basis for a really nice pan sauce. All that's happening is once the liquid reduces, it'll thicken up and contain within it those combined flavors locked inside of that fond. I added a few pinches of salt to bring it to life and a long dash of rice vinegar to wake it up. Then some tomato paste to give it some shoes. Now, to cook the pancake, we're gonna use a preheated griddle, nonstick pan, stainless steel frying pan. And into our pan, we're gonna put vegetable oil, olive oil, butter. I added some peanut oil to the butter because of its high smoke point, but my pancakes came out a little burnt, so maybe pay more attention than I did. Get an oversized spoon and plop down a loose handful of batter only to realize that the oil's not hot enough. At some point it got hot enough. Let's try it again. Ah, uh, yeah, it's okay. The method we're going to use for these scrambled eggs is one that was inspired by Gordon Ramsay. Basically, you're gonna crack three eggs into a saucepan, followed by a respectable amount of butter. Then on a medium to medium low heat, stir the mixture constantly, making sure that no portion of the mixture has enough time to settle on the surface of the pan and cook faster than the rest of it, turning it into a sort of diner style scrambled egg curd. We're not going for that. These scrambled eggs are more like a thick sauce, and in order to achieve this texture, we have to stir constantly so that the whole mass of eggs cooks slowly and equally, taking the pan off the heat as needed if things are getting too intense. First, the butter's gonna melt. Then, for what's gonna feel like a long time, nothing's really gonna happen. But then all of a sudden, you'll notice that the liquid will start to thicken quite quickly into your creamy, saucy texture. I added a little extra cream as well for a bit of added richness and to slow down the cooking process. When you're happy with your texture, transfer your eggs to a bowl and season with salt and pepper. For assembly, lay your pancake on a plate with the non-burnt side facing up. Spread on a generous layer of the scrambled eggs then your spiced potato onion mixture, and then the coconut tomato sauce. Finally, top with some thinly sliced green onions and some cilantro for some much needed freshness to balance out the wealth of rich fat richness below. Ah, one of these days I'm gonna get a table. Anyway, let's try this, shall we? I mean, I'm sure you know the expression, when people eat really good food, sometimes they say, it's like there's a party in my mouth and everyone's invited. Well, this is like, there's an orgy in my mouth and everyone's about to come. There's so many things going on here, so many layers, so many delicious things happening and interacting with each other. Look at this, look at this, there's so much here. 
There's the pancake, there's the egg, there's the potato and onion mixture, then there's that tomato coconut sauce, then some green onions and some cilantro. I mean, do I have to keep explaining things? Probably. This is really good. Well, that's it. I just want to thank my esteemed guests for stopping by. Thank you for stopping by. No, no, I, I wanted to thank you for stopping by. The overmixtured batter. I know, I know, jeez. How about you, do you have anything constructive to say? You fat mouth little stupid bitch. It's like talking to my grandma. Well anyway, as always, do what you love because nobody cares and it doesn't matter.